Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba and family, I'm here with my good brother, Kwesi Boyd. Peace family, peace. Greetings family, mm -hmm. this is going to be an interesting topic and it's, we call this one polygamy and not monogamy. Mm. The lifestyle of Kwesi Boyd. Mm. Yes, <laughs> you're like, Bomani put me on the spot, so uh, mm -hmm. brother, are you open to talking about, you know, yeah, sure. Polygamy yeah. in all aspects mm -hmm. of things. Yeah, that's that's a, that's and our you're speaking culture. from a lifestyle that you live. You're speaking from mm -hmm. this living that life, not you know somebody that that talks about it and fantasizes we, about listen, it. Listen, we all we all live a polygamous life. For real, break it down. Poly, what is poly? Poly means more than one, right? Absolutely. Okay, so how many people you know that are engaging in more than one relationship here in America? I'm sure many people are doing that. Yeah, we're, 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 yeah. I'm sure many people only participate in only one relationship. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. So and, and maybe, I mean, I don't, have, for I, I don't have these as statistics. So family, a toast to the good times and toast to the nation building. Uh -huh. um, but if you, if you just look at it like this, how, many, how many people in America have been with more than one person? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's your poly, question, right? Okay. Ain't that poly? So check this out, right? So All right. in African culture, you know, uh, polygamy... Polygamy is actually practiced by 85% of the world, and monogamy is only practiced by, you know, Western societies. Wow. Right? And it's proven that in Western societies, you have more uh, premarital sex, babies being born out of wedlock, prostitution. Um, mon monogamous societies represent the worst societies in the world. Wow. When, and that's just the facts. That's just the facts. On the African continent, that's a part of the culture. You know, Islam is, you know, uh, it predates Islam. You know, that is how the original black man did things and structured things until the society uh, came under the rule of uh, Caucasians. And that's just the bare facts of it. You know, so uh, in the continuation of that, you know, our, our women have, uh, you know, the ones that were brought to the West were conditioned into a uh, matriarch society, you know, the Queen's rule. And uh, when they brought the first Africans over to the continent, they killed off the men and they gave the woman the authority on the plantation. She was the only one that could speak to the, uh, the slave master. And, you know, the man had a role that of uh, a lesser role th th than a woman, that of a child, or even that of a dog, you understand? So that's with the history that we're coming from, where the women are the head of the house. They attacked the house, broke the structure down. Yeah, I mean, once we lost our culture, you know, uh, in uh, Chancellor William uh, book, Destruction of Black Civilization, right. I read over 20 years ago, he said, a man cannot have full manhood without racial worth and identity, and that's verbatim. And we as black men, we all have this idea of, you know, having this, you know, uh, having a wife and, you know, having this perfect life scenario and things and children, and it, it don't work out. Everybody really gave up on that idea so much so, so that it, uh, it perverted, you know, uh, once righteous people, um, you know, their outlook or their, you know, how they live their lifestyle their culture they it perverted it it made it into a culture of death which we live in <clears throat> so in, in terms of uh, polygamy you know islam i was introduced to islam about when i was 23 you know what i mean so quite some time ago and when i when I when I read and saw it was permissible to have more than one wife because I wasn't into African culture or knew anything about it to any detail, I just knew vaguely. And everybody know African culture. You have more than one wife. That's what we know about it, and that's the great turnoff for you know Western society, and you know particularly the woman. So, you know, uh, in any case. You know, in African society, you know, if you're coming over, you have to understand that that's a part of society. You know, you don't have to go over there and be polygamous. You know, you don't have to do that. You know, people over there monogamous. You can be single and do those things, but you can't. I Man, I think that's a lot of the drama came when you know when they came over. And now, you know, you've seen, you know, my wives and things like that. The wives. <laughs> yeah. Exactly how many wives? 
I was I was married over there quite a few times. You know, I was married over there four times, but uh, I divorced one. You know, so, you know, in any case, um, what I do that's my personal life, and that was something that they wanted to bring out. And but however, they 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 were very disrespectful towards the culture there, right. and saying, oh, he's you know, saying these things about my. Uh, <laughs> wives and basically attacking them and their family you know these women are coming over attacking you know the, the culture and the uh the value system in the country you know uh, but but you know from western what you know these western mindsets so they feel like you shouldn't you know you shouldn't be able to live like that you should just only have one woman and that's it that's america right no i mean but, yeah. but but that's what they that's their personal belief that they feel and they're imposing that on someone like yourself right right exactly right. I, I think all you know anyone. but they, but they're also trying to do that in a country where you say this is permissible or mm -hmm. you know or acceptable mm -hmm. and, and things like that yeah. uh, based on the land of the law mm -hmm. so it's, what is the land of the law saying that you can have as many women as you can want to take care of or, you have, or up you to several four, wives four. four according to Islam yeah so so this this is based <clears throat> on religious content or mm -hmm. is it also based on it's the laws and of cultural and cultural content yeah, it's, 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 both mixed, it's both mixed together the Gambia so culturally I mean you, you know is that the same laws that work in America no that don't work here <laughs> it's a backward society <laughs> but, but I'm saying that don't people do that in America <laughs> yeah you know you know you know what's it, 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 it called cheating <laughs> they call it cheating you know and it's, it's done in a haphazard uh, way but uh, like I said, you know, what option do a person have? I mean, I, I would tell my sister or my daughter, you know, the, the one way is you're going to go through life with this expectation of a man that's never going to meet um, up to what your standard of uh, a man is supposed to be because wow. of what you're locked in in terms of your, your thinking. You know what I mean? Now, um, there's not enough available men out there, so... You know, culturally, I'll go into the cultural idea, and then I'll just talk about you know the idea of um, more people. You know, they got the Rise family out there. You know, brother Kevin, and he has two wives, and you know they're trying. You know, they're bringing awareness about it. And it's a, it's a few people, but when the the opposite way, you know, it's a uh, it brings a, a about a, a lot of pain for people because you know you have children that are being born without fathers. Yeah. And it's still happening, Good you know. Point. You have people, you know, if you have more than one baby mama or more than one baby father, you know what I mean? That's it's the same idea. Like a brother, he might have two or three baby mothers. Those still his wives because he locked into them. Right. But it was right. from day one, they never had any intention on making a decent family. <clears throat> They were interacting and producing a child, you know, like, hey, boyfriend and girlfriend. You know, so we lock ourselves into these limited ideas, which has uh, ruined our com uh, culture. And, you know, so, you know, anyone with any sense, you know, my spiritual father had uh, 13 wives. You know, there's, you know, uh, you know, there, there were, King Solomon was the wisest man on the earth. He had 800 wives. Wow. That's a lot of other wives, man. But, you know, with the... The idea of the wife is that it's a title. It's not an entitlement. You okay. know what I mean? So it's, uh, you know, uh, you're in the Euro white supremacist society versus the, the, the black man, uh, you know, natural order of creation, you know, in their society, you know, it's not for everybody, but you have to be doing something you know what I mean because your wife has to have a capacity you know what I mean whether it's domestic or it's you know within a business family structure you know so you know um, how we used to do it is if there was a need for you to take if you just had I use a simple scenario like if you had some sheeps because back in the Bible it was practiced most of the prophets had more than one wife and they had concubines right. it was, you know so we lost all of that culture it was responsibility and we were in a community and we lived together we just didn't let our daughters go out and choose their sexual partners you understand what I'm saying you know but in any in any case um you know uh with the idea of polygamy, I just lost my idea I was on. Maybe I didn't hit my one again. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Get, get a toast, brother. <laughs> uh, so family, our brother's breaking it down. As we look in a society uh, where, uh, oh yeah, uh, continue, brother. Absolutely. Okay, so the the black man, say if you had some a couple sheep, right? Mm -hmm. Your father give you a couple sheep to start your your own uh, business, like back in the day, and then you grew to ten sheep. You know, so when you had two, you can take care of your clothing, your food, clothing, and your house, and you, your few sheep. But once you grew out of that capacity now you need somebody and a sister like a sister and a, a sister right but not your sister but somebody else's sister and you you bring them into your house she becomes a sister to you in the terms of a merger which is another word for marriage so you bringing things together like creation like the bonding right so merging Right, so you make a merger, you make an agreement with the family. Okay, I see your son, he's healthy. You know, you make those arrangements. You know, my daughter can marry yours, your daughter. You know, you might be producing something or whatever the case may be, or you might be interested, or, or our families have some prior relationship or whatever, and uh, you can take my daughter as a wife. Or in any case, you get married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's good, man. <laughs> and then, and then let's say, okay. Then once you get say say if you're not, now you might be good with ten sheep and that's your your capacity all you can do with ten sheep that's all your mind can get around and grasp and control and with your with your with your one wife and you can and hold that down but what if you can get now a hundred sheep now there's a need there because either the wife you with needs to handle the business with you and then you need to take. And a nanny in this society to help with the domestic stuff, or the wife stay in the domestic capacity and you need a personal assistant. You know it's gonna be some banging in that equation. And <laughs> in America, you understand? So yeah, you always, it's um, the I, white corporation is like this. The the white corporate CEO has the per the nanny, right? He has the personal assist assistant. He, he has a secretary, right? That's his wife, a mm. uh, nanny, his personal assistant, and a secretary. That's four, what? Four women, that's what? In his business, his intimate environment, brushing up on him with the booty. and the, Come on, people. We know what we get. You know how we get down. You know, so, you know, that's what I talk to, and that's the conversation I have. You know, and I have had in the past when I, you know, was moving towards that idea because I've expressed it and explored it here in the States, but it was problems. So that's why I went to Africa because, you know, uh, in my capacity, you you know, like the Jews, if you read the book, 48 Laws of Power, what they did, the grandfather did is all this boys, he sent them to different parts of the world so they can control the, the, the financial trade. But what they did, and they still do and done for a long time, they married the brother's daughters to the other brother because right. they wanted to keep the bloodline pure. So, you know, if you're spending time and time, you know, anytime someone's spending time in your personal environment, as far as another woman, you know, uh, uh, you you know, as far as like nannies or anybody that's, if, if, if your man is in that type of capacity, if he ain't doing shit and he got, you know, his homegirl, they sitting around smoking, eating bologna sandwiches, playing Nintendo, you know, then, you know, PlayStation, then that's something else. But if he's out there and he's doing something, and he's working with, you know, other sisters that's in those capacities, you understand? That's a sister to you. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they're, they're holding it down and they're loyal. And um, African culture, the beautiful thing about it is that it's done there because they see each other as sisters. You know, they, have, they don't see each other as enemies. And, you know, you're able to experience... Um, Life as it's you know it's supposed to be you know it's a little drama but it, it, you know we're seeing a lot of death in the, in the U.S. because of that. So the, the 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 black man dynasty we have wives and the white man corporate model he has the nanny nanny uh, personal assistant and the uh, uh, secretary. That's his four wives. That's his four wives. Yeah. Come on, brother. Wow. What you got for me, man? Let's go, wow, man. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> well, family, our brother put it in straight perspective <laughs> on things like that. So I mean, it's not it's not complicated. It's like if you can't get with it, you can't get with it. You know yeah, I mean? it's yeah, about it's responsibility is breaking down. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, and you know, and he mentioned to me, uh, you know, you want to tell people, you know. You know, he talked about his family and his wives, and he talked mm-hmm. about being responsible and handling it to the highest level family. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're talking about this a straight nation building. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, we're dealing with a situation, literally, where you have a generation, you know, this is like the weakest generation of black men that's ever been produced on the planet. It's this terrible situation, you know what I mean? And, and things like that. So, you're talking about from from you know from you know from you know from the foolishness to you know what I'm saying to you know incarcerations you know, foolishness you know it's all these mix of this things you know where basically you 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 have a you have a, a whole percentage of brothers or men or male out of the game is what we're talking about you know yeah, I mean? yeah. they don't got to go into all the specifics and things like that you know what I mean I want nobody saying that we talking you know, during the 60s, there things that I, I, I watched some videos and they were saying during the 60s you you seen a lot of blast black masculinity like Shaft and like uh, uh, Jim Brown those a great, type of great, roles great point playing. now you're in a situation where I mean I'm not here to judge anybody by the way they were calling it weird so I'm not even going to mention yeah. certain things but it, even beyond beyond that but Literally, we have a generation of men that are not producing to just get right to the point. Yeah. And and some either they can't or won't or they just not. You know what I'm saying? You, you can you, you can yeah. kind of work the sequence in, but it's a, a situation where other men has to step up. So if my brother said four is the max and he can handle four, let him handle four. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If someone is talking about every year they're going to get a new wife and bring new children into the, 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 the movements and things like that and get new wives and build a generation because a man you know can produce up to how long? A man can produce up to about what, 80, 90 years old? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With, with proper health and strength, you could be 90 years old still. I had this brother still, one still time. Still generating children. This during that time, you know, uh, the people were trying to attack me. I had this one guy like, you having these children at your age, who's going to be around for the children, right? And I'm like, nigga, worry about your own goddamn life. Which hell you worry about what I got set up for? You know what I mean? That's my plan. You know what I'm saying? What, what are you worrying about me for? And, and what I'm doing? How you know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it? You know what I mean? Yeah, people assume a lot of things, business. man. I mean, it's a life. I've, I've had conversations where it's just it's like hard to talk to some people about it and things mm-hmm. like that way. Especially when you you know when you're, you know when you you know. <coughs> You're an international person myself. You know, you live, you know, I'm here in Georgia right now, you know, but I'm planning to just do this incredible six country Africa journey and I'm in and mm-hmm. out of different countries around the right. world. Like, been mm-hmm. to like literally yeah. 35 countries across six continents. And you, yeah. you know, since you're 18 and you're moving. Mm-hmm. So you have, you know, a time or two, you know, you have one or two love connections here and there. Yeah, things yeah. That over a period of time. It's yeah, inevitable. Bro, yeah. Especially when you're a man who loves women. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is a great thing, especially in this weird day and times that we're yeah. in. You know what right. I'm saying? So people should be saying, yo, they should be bo- promoting and stuff because we need to see, you know, or our children need to see men being men and it's a situation where it's like, you, you know, what do you want to see? You want to see the foolishness or you want to see men out there being accountable, responsible and building their family. Right. You know right. what I mean? So, you exactly. know, when I, when I talk about things like about multiple wives and about a, this different evolution of like you know like mm-hmm. you know like two things i explained to someone i was like the wives of bomani mm-hmm. and then i explained to them the tribe of bomani mm-hmm. and then, then you're trying to explain well, certain you things wives and concubines <laughs> <laughs> you, you explain to them a, a a science of where you're educating a generation of children mm-hmm. in a situation where you're they're, they're being grown up in an organized family community mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have things in place, investments. You have things yeah. where you're trying to create that generational wealth and investment that's and things the, that. that the and you can't really do that situation, brother, where you have a situation where it's just like a single family. You know what I mean? Because you know, no, I've, no, no. I've been, I've been, you know, in that life, just being a single father for this, like, you know what I mean? It's like you know, my little boy about to be, or my big boy about to be 12 years old. So you, you're looking at a situation like, you know what I mean? What if you wanted to just have more than one child? And what if you wanted to build a family? What if you want to build a family enterprise? Now, things that we know we, we don't really think about, but when we think about all these incredible names of those people out there that you just take, you know, you know whether it's the whether it's Ford, Hilton, Marriott, these are those names that you know when you hear about that you tie it to what family and generational wealth, you know what I mean, and things like that. Yeah. So that's what you're building. 
and you're realizing that in order for you to build that, you're going to have to approach the situation different. Like we talk about now, instead of doing certain things in America, now you're doing it in Africa. Instead of getting land in, in America, you're getting land in Africa. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, that's, that's why I ask you a key point mm -hmm. as far as uh, what is the, you know, what is the max and how does the laws work as far as well, multiple wives before, and polygamy and my, then compared to America. This, before okay. I lose this thought. You know, uh, the early dynasties, you know, the Chinese dynasties, well, they all originated from the ancient African dynasties. That's how it was always done. You know, the, the king, like, they have a good uh, Netflix series called uh, Marco Polo. And yeah. it, it, Marco Polo, it, it speaks of a, a Caucasian who had gained favor inside the, uh, the Mongolian Empire under the Khan. He became confident to the Khan of Mongolia. So the Khan, you know, you always have the queen. You always have the queen for to establish your bloodline, but you would have um, concubines, and these concubines were used for the purpose of, uh, you know, producing children. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, mostly, you know. However, you know they also tended to the court because if you have an empire, right, and you live behind the gate, and you have soldiers, right, you have soldiers. You know, you have thousands, tens of thousands of soldiers. You know what I mean? You have generals. It's a lot that go on in the court. So you need ears and eyes everywhere. You need absolute loyalty or you might find, you're going to find a knife in your juggler. You understand what I'm saying? So the, the, the court was run at the highest level of discipline. Anything that, when you went into the Khan court, to approach the Khan, you had to get on your knees. The Mongolian had the greatest and largest empire on this planet earth look at that netflix series you know when they got there they said anyone in the khan's court was a, uh, a honored guest and a prisoner is the same thing the concubines they were usually people that were caught in war you understand what i'm saying when they came and they took over your stuff they were a, a warrior people you understand what i mean if you were a weak people and you weak they were going to take take you over and slaughter all of the men and take your women and slaughter most of the women and take the the mongolian empire is no joke however the, there was uh concubines there and uh you know in terms of you know our role and and what we do as we take uh you know we have wives everyone's not you know could be a wife you know what I mean? I gotcha. When you start going into the dynasty, like someone who would be a concubine is a widower. You know, she wouldn't be a wife because, you know, when what they would do is only a, a, a virgin would be your wife. You know, when the empire, those are the wives and the, 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 uh, the ones who came through, you know, the concubines, those are like prisoners of war. But the, you know, so uh, as well as you know, in, in a dynasty, you have women like, I work with a lot of girls, okay, it's obvious, but I, you know, you don't, you hardly see any of my, of my wives around. Right. So, you know, even though uh, in a, corp a corporate CEO might have the nanny at home, this, I had that, I had nannies and all of that, You the nanny at home, the personal assistant that's in and out the house, my personal assistant used to live at the house, I had two uh, assistances. One used to stay with me 24. My wife was there. I had my driver here in Atlanta. I had my uh, personal assistant, Nika. She was a beast. She used to go everywhere I go, do everything I do, keep my appointments, my time. You know, um, then I would have Talia. That was, she would come in. Then I had Miyoko, and I had two two uh, interns, uh, ja uh, ja uh, Jasmine and Monet that was doing the clothing at another property. So then I had five girls coming in doing taxes. So in any given day, I would have around me 15 girls. This was when I was in Atlanta, you know, uh, 15 years ago. So I've always, you know, had that dynamic. But I'm saying sometimes I would take a group of girls and I would go to uh, uh, Toledo. We had an apartment up there. You know, I could have easily slept with any of those girls if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You know, so, but they, the guys I was around, they used to mess around because people used to do like that, you know, uh, mess around. You can't control who, who people sleep with and things right. like that. Serious business. But, you know, if I wanted more loyalty, I could have said, hey, listen, you know, I couldn't get a wife here because my wife wouldn't allow me. I, you know, I tried that and we had a problem. So your wife here in the U.S. 
my ex-wife, hey. I was married 18 years. So she wasn't down with the polygamy, additional wife and nothing, but she was probably okay with you cheating and not letting her know? Well, we know that. We know that. <laughs> you know, for, to, to keep that fantasy, to keep that fantasy. Yeah, my, my man is being faithful to me type stuff. And she just really—it's not. We, I, I she just want to really believe that could just work to where she just have one person and that person just with her. And that's well, it. They, the, the sisters got to ask themselves a question: Did that? Did that? Did that ever work? Uh, yeah, well, that's that's a great question. So, well, Max, and you, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a sister right here to ask her. As a matter of fact, oh, I'll, we need I, to do I, a lot. I, 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 I'll take one or two, uh, and then find out if that ever works. Uh, but I mean, uh, statistically, but statistically, does it work? You know, in, in these people numbers, like you know, how many men out there just have like one woman, one wife? You know, you married and just like that's you know, it. They, they call it serial monogamy, where through our life we go through all of these relationships, one person for two months, one person. For <laughs> months. Well, yeah, that that's that false, you know, and then we end up, you know. What about the people that tell you that, like you know, what I'm saying that they, they, they've been together for fifty years, bro. How many people? What's the? What, is that the the exception or that's the rule? Maybe it's probably like one out of every, every ten thousand. I mean, I don't know. That, that, that's, that's like not, that's like 0.01%. The reality, the reality I mean, I don't know. Is, 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 is a lot of legs are going open too early, and a lot of babies are coming out <laughs> and becoming killers. What's up, my man in the car? What's up, man? Go, go talk to your people. Somebody in the driveway. Go talk to your people. Somebody want. in the driveway. Oh yeah, your friend is probably here. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Go, go open the door for him. Okay. Yeah, and things that so family, uh, we literally just uh, gonna you know <laughs> even you know gonna probably just continue on another segment you know because it's what it is as uh, we're talking about the situation. I think we just, need to do we can do a live on this one. We can talk about that. You know, if anybody have any questions about, it, I think it's a conversation that need to be talked about. Yeah, absolutely, family. We are uh, we have a guest uh, you know, coming in, so we're gonna break and connect uh, back and things like that. But. Hopefully we have given you some good insight. You know, I was like, man, I was like, appreciate it, man. We we have to educate our people, but the key point that you make is like, you know, how much of this ever works, you know, no, no, you yeah. know, and things like that. So that's what people have to think about, and you know what I mean. And it's what it is. Uh, people have to do what they need to do. But beyond that, family, uh, let's keep it strong. Let's uh, stay organized. And um, let's be real with ourselves. It's about black power and nation building. And our guest is here. Come on in, brother. Uh, you know, have a seat right there. And uh, we're just wrapping up a little bit and we just uh, connect with you and everything. Uh, so, yes, family, uh, any last words, though? Serious, man. You know, I think we need to go into it again and we can talk about it in another video. Oh, just break it down I, I a little bit more? I think it warrants two videos, yeah. Yeah, because you you're breaking down the history of things. Yeah. And then I was talking about just the, you know, the delivery, just. The future of how we do it, because what you talking about is literally just. We gonna using talk about how we gonna resources. Just think about it. If we can, if you look at it in terms of, we are gonna go into a universal understanding of it and how, you know, um, if you look into the atom of life. See, we come from a background, five percent background, and you know, if you look at the atom, you have in the center of it, you know, the the proton, right, and electrons rotate around that proton. So the proton is the positive, which would represent the man, and then the electrons are the women. Right. So the proton is it's the light at the center of the even our physical solar system, right? So the sun represents man, that energy, that light. So when you have a man in, in, in your life or your father, you know, everything rotates around the father in the household. So he is the one that's supposed to bring forth divine light or whatever knowledge. Knowledge is considered light. He has, he brings out, and then the wife comes and she supports that. And her activities as a wife rotates around the father. The daughters, they represent the electrons. So you always have one proton and then you have multiple electrons in each atom. So that's, the, that's gonna be the, the universal foundation to the next video. Oh, I can. <laughs> yes. Absolutely, fam. That's our good brother, yeah, Quincy yeah. Boy, there, live on Revolution Camp, breaking it down like it's never been broken down before, fam. <laughs> Literally. That, yeah. you know, and he's talking from experience. I mean, our brother's living in the Gambia, you know, yeah. with his three wives. 
Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. And, and many other. And, I mean, it's just, and, you know, and, culturally, and, and, it's just normal there. It's not even like, you know, it's something. So that's that, why you got to drop some of the, the rules and regulation normal. and things like that. Because, you know, you, okay. you're just having a conversation and, and the, the brother was asking you on the phone. You know, like, you know, basically asking you if, if, if you, you, you be having three. <laughs> well, he, he was asking if you were having basically try. three and foursomes <laughs> because you told him that you had three wives. So I explain that and break that down. <laughs> you know, I probably, they probably smacked the shit out of me if I had so shit like that. It's, it's, yeah. And I, I think I used to think at that one time, but, it, you know, it's all individual marriages. You know what I mean? It's none of that type of idea. It's you know something I mean? that you probably do with a few of your, you know what I'm saying, a few of your... In know, America. Your, 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 your sweet ladies have a three or four some, but he's saying that not with his wives. Is that what is it? That's what my brother's explaining. No, no, no. With, it's, or or it's, just the it's women in general, there, they, just, they just don't Islam. get down like that. Oh, you're talking about, over there, you know, you well, have women. We're talking about all of Africa, so it's, it, you have I guess women, it You have women over there. If you're a person that, that's into all of that, I, I don't... I don't know if you can get married and do that, you know, I mean... No, you, know, you definitely only, can't get married culturally, and do that. That's culturally, not even culturally, you know, they, 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 that's not what... They, it's, it's like you're married to one person. You know, it really is. You're just married to one person and, and you guys just all live together. You know, and it's, it's, it's unique because um, once you get past the jealousy part, it's like... Everybody's kind of free. You don't have to oh, be... Oh, wow. So, 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 you, so you know, well, you got to explain the jealousy part. It, no, I'm saying if you if, if, if American women get through the jealousy part, over there it's different. You know, we have little petty jealousy, but we're all we're at the the, the highest level of uh, uh, divine living. So you don't think most American women would be down with this? They're already down with it. <laughs> they already. They already. They already. <laughs> no, I'm saying. <laughs> now check it out. What 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 sister you know? If you got a man out there, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> You know, so he tells me that it, yeah, no it, sister got a man that's faithful to them. If he didn't commit to you, if he didn't commit to you like a marriage, you got to worry about the married man. You think the dude that's a single dude, you know, he, he gonna lie to you. You know what I mean? And that's just the way it is because he don't want to get in there. You know, you know, we've been through those relationships. Yo, I might go her at the house, man. She be bugging, drama and shit. But yo, I'm gonna beat you at the motherfucking, you know, strip club later. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, we got to really hide our sexuality and be suppressed with our sexuality. And it, uh, it really leads to uh, deviant behavior in society. And uh, this is a backward society. It's a backward society. So we have to, uh, you know, uh, look at things that's going to help us and protect us. And, you know, uh, reestablishing ourselves with our culture. We got to educate ourselves. So perfect. So you either saying for the women, either accept polygamy or accept being cheated on. <laughs> this thing, if you're a sister out there, right? You're a sister out there and you've been in, a, in relationships and you have children. And you have an, another brother that comes into the relationship. And you want him to be a father to your children that you have with another man. And you, might may, you may have a man that was willing to do that. But at the same time, how about his, his children, his daughter, his ex-wife? Y'all all married to some degree. You understand what I mean? Right. You know, whether she's single or not, he still have other children. You know, and, you know, the way that we do it is, don't, t you know, you can't talk to the children on that side. You know, these children don't talk to that child. If we haven't realized uh, by now that we are in a backwards, uh, perverted society, then um, they'll erase any, you know, anybody who would even have any remembrance of it. We will no longer exist. You know what I mean? And it'll no be like when when things go extinct. You know, their whole ecosystem no longer exists. You know, and that's what we're seeing. When you were talking earlier about you know producing, you know, uh, mathematically. You know, uh, 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 likes can't produce. They gotta be different. You know what I mean? You can't have two, two negative or two, two, two positives, and and produce. You understand? That's extinction level stuff. So when you see a lot of that coming to the environment, where you have, uh, you know, a, a young men with other young men and other young women with other young women, you know, I, they have this little thing that they have on social media where it says it's a woman there and she's, it has a. Uh, 
a cloud and in the cloud it says you know I don't need a man and then they have the little girl she has a little cloud by her head it says I don't want a man mm, and then you wow. have the little boy he's there and has a cloud by his head and then it says I don't want to be a man you know, <laughs> oh, wow you ever saw that one before nah yeah bro, so, that's you know, sick. it's a little cartoon and it just yeah, shows wow. the idea of how you know uh, we were given a false uh, 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 a culture we were given you know these false ideas you know uh, as a people and they said hey try to go out there and run with it you know I'm not I'm not really you know I don't go into religion and talk about all of that stuff all of these tools that were used to uh, you know mentally genocide us mm -hmm. you know however you know the dominant culture of this society is definitely a problem in the mindsets you know the pop culture yeah. You know, so as intelligent people, you know, we're in a war-like scenario. My brother talk about it all the time. You know, we are at war, you know, we're going into some serious stuff. And we have many casualties, man. The streets running with blood every day with young black men. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, we have to, the ones that are aware, you know, like, it took um, Noah 40 years to build the ark. And he couldn't get nobody to do nothing. You know what I mean? But when it started raining, guess who was all around the ark? A bunch of people. You understand what I'm saying, but they, they, you know, they end up drowning. So we've been drowning for a, la a long time. You know, the, the rains, it's been raining on our community, dark cloud for a long time, through these, uh, these false ideas and these false perceptions. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for the sun to come out. You know, what I mean, with knowledge, knowledge, knowledge is the foundation of all things in existence. Knowledge is the black man who is the sun, because just like the sun is the foundation to the solar system, the black man is the foundation to the family. Knowledge is to know the ledge so you won't fall over the edge into the devil's uncivilization, which is a strict knowledge. Peace. Peace. That's it, family. <laughs> Peace, That's our brother, Quasi <laughs> Boyd, live on Uncut here on Revolutionary <laughs> Camp at Bomani Technology Studio. <laughs> Dropping it, family. It's uh, polygamy and not monogamy. Fake monogamous. The lifestyle <laughs> of Quasi Boyd, and he's literally just explaining and breaking the it down. The dynasty, the dynasty, yeah. the black man dynasty. So he's talking about man. straight up nation building. Nation building, building yep. Is empire. Mm -hmm. yep. And like I said, family, one of the main things is we have to think about the, the men who won't produce, can't produce, and all those other you know, scenarios and things like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, show can, no, much yeah, love to the yeah. polygamists. And the men that are willing to be accountable for a nationhood and things like that. So, you know what I'm saying, family? Stay tuned and we're going to show you more and more of this nation building, especially when we relocate to the motherland and we're building all these empires and building and building and building. Because that's what it is about, family. Mm -hmm. It's about black power nation building. Yes. Get with the art. Yes, man. Absolutely, no, brother, man. This was a great exclusive, man. So hopefully right. you don't ask me to edit anything because, you know what I mean? The, the feminists are going to come after you. you know I'm saying I'm going to tell them I'm just interviewing you. <laughs> the yeah, 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 listen, you know, like, like I said, you know, um, you know, it's like our people, you know, anything good for us, you know, we see it as a bad thing. You know, we see our blessing as a curse and our curse as a blessing. And that's a known fact. So, I mean, it, it's about being intelligent. And we're, we're known as being a people who ignore who ignore the truth and be made to ignore and we really don't have a voice in this world you know we're, we're you know they say the black woman is worth than five dollars the mexicans come in and they you know their woman their their worth is more greater than the black woman wow. you understand what i'm saying we got to look at these numbers we can sit around and talk and you know and things like that especially if you're looking at this and you you're thinking about coming to africa and you're representing pan-african Pan-Africanism, you should understand the basis of Western society and Western philosophy, which includes monogamy. You should understand that already, and you shouldn't be putting up a fight towards it. And, it, you know, you, you know, uh, if it's not for you, it's just not for you. But with all of that bitter, hateful energy, wanting to bring a brother down and things like that because you see some type of masculinity and you feel that is a threat to your femininity, no. You know, what, ha what has been taking place with us as a people has been a threat to your very existence, leaving you stranded on an island of financial responsibility by yourself, being taken care of by a uh, government who only want to see your demise. It's, you know, I really left out of the conversation a long time ago and just said, hey, listen, you know, I'm just going to go to Africa and, uh, you, know, I, you know, you can't beat a dead horse. 
you know, because I've been through a lot, you know, as a, a, a brother, a young brother coming up in the streets and things like that. You know, I did small time, like, you know, uh, two and a half years, you know, over um, 30 years ago. But when I went, when I, I went to juvenile probably when I was uh, 14 years old in a um, drug bus, they came in here inside a house. And I was in there for 14 days, and I think that I did that twice. And then I ended up doing like two years or four months. But when I was sitting in there, I was looking at the clock, and I was like, <clears throat> I was like, wow. I was like, to be in here knowing I have so much potential, but I mm -hmm. knew it was for a purpose. And then I just started studying as much as I can, Islam, religions, and things, and just, you know, build my mind. You know, and uh, that's where I got, you know, my, my education. I ended up a brother from Kenya. He was getting his master's degree. And it was funny about the brother. The brother was in there. He was from Kenya, right? And the humblest brother in the world, you know, Juan Joey from the Guguyu tribe of Kenya. You know, I actually read the book, uh, you know, Mount uh, Kenya, Taking Mount Kenya, uh, Joma Kenyatta. Right. You know, I did a presentation on the whole book, so I learned about that. This was decades ago. But he taught me, uh, you know, I was doing accounting and stuff like that. So I learned accounting one and two a long time ago and, you know, uh, learned how to type. I knew how to type for a long, you know, people see me type, they think I'm playing. But uh, <laughs> but I do really know how to type. And, um, you know, I've, I've acquired a lot of skills a long time ago. But he was in there. And he had got shot by the police. He was like... They said I robbed the bank, <laughs> not a bank. He said I wow. robbed the store, but I didn't rob the store. Wow. And they, you know, and they, he said he was up, in the man. wrong place at the wrong time. They, the cops shot him. That's always the he story, He got right? convicted. And when you meet this dude, and I know some, you know, this brother from New Haven, Connecticut. This is my boy right here. This is my brother, Bonzo <laughs> Grill Christ. How, how you, doing? The, you know what I mean? Me, He's sitting over here. And, and this brother right here, he can tell you some horror stories and he know my brother very well him and my brother like this uh -huh. my brother was murdered he'll tell you my brother was a straight gangster yeah, my brother he not somebody you want to run into and then a lot of characters and people yeah. if we hung around you didn't want to run into him yes, you definitely sirs, didn't want to have no problem with him right you know, so <laughs> we uh you know know what you're talking about you know, for real you know you know what i'm saying so yes, we coming sirs. from these backgrounds where we coming out of these war scenarios this is, this is where i got shot right here you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. Right here in Atlanta, I got my tag, you know what I mean? And my boy Bossom wasn't so lucky. He he lost his life. Good kid, Muslim brother, you know, rest in peace, Bossom. And he had a gun on him. So we got all these philosophies. They're saying, hey, militarize your women. Now we got our women out there thinking it's cool to have a gun. Right. You know, that's, you know, I always say we have to arm ourselves, arm yourself with knowledge. You know, if everybody See, that's does, what I believe, brother. You know, Everybody knowledge, got you know, get back average. to knowledge is power, right? There's enough guns in this country for everyone to have uh, two or three guns, and that's not a good serious well, thing. Everybody gonna yeah. shoot each other and kill each other. Well, what's interesting I found is that I grew up with some thorough brothers from mm -hmm. from Connecticut. You want to get Brooklyn. on? You want get, get on? The, or not? I don't no. mind, but you know, it's, it's you want one or it's too just all the brother, brother, you can yeah, jump right on by, by you. you. Huh? Catch on next time, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I actually want a glass of wine. I got. Oh, I get you a glass of wine. I got some. I got. Some, I got my own. I got you some beer too. Oh, yeah, yeah you, go, you right. can go bring it on, man. It's, it's all. This is revolution so camp. About this family, we, we keep it live and uncut. Okay, yeah, we, we can talk a little bit. Yeah. I need the wine, man. I'm coming from like running around, <laughs> but I really want to touch bases with you. What you were talking about because that's very deep. Uh -huh. it's, it's it's power in what you were saying, man. In regards to we we on the air. Yeah, no, no, we just recorded though. Yeah, but powerful what you're saying in regards to that because like you know we grew up with some serious brothers yeah and I, I noticed over the years as that most of the brothers that got murked mm -hmm. they had a gun on them yeah and that was key for me mm -hmm. that was key for me mm -hmm. so you go through all of these measures to carry a gun but then you realize that dang the baddest the biggest the boogeyman mm -hmm. got murked and he had a gun <laughs> on him <laughs> yeah. so it taught me to realize that when somebody's coming for you, mm -hmm. they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Right. And that that's just the, that's just the simple fact of it. The rest of it is just is just BS because you can have your gun all you want. It becomes like the wild wild west. Right. right. It's who get who first. Exactly. Hope you got enough bullets. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh -huh. And I learned after that. I said, you know what? Dang man. Every time, every time, every time a gun was in play in my life, it was me being the aggressor and me going to get the gun. 
But actually, I can't put that on my God because God made it where I didn't really need it. It was no. in my head. It was in my mind. Mm -hmm. I never needed it. I was going to get it all the time. It was no. I was never put in a situation where I was vulnerable to a gunman. Mm -hmm. So in my case, I really didn't have a point because something's been, been helping me through this. Mm -hmm. And I realized, Roger, you need to slow down because you're the one to quick to go get that. Mm -hmm. You don't need it. You don't need it. Yeah, I got yeah. an appointment with, with, with the king. Mm -hmm. I got a set up. Once I realized that, mm -hmm. and I, I, I've been through enough to know that that really is true, mm -hmm. you know, life is not coincident. It's not an accident. Mm -hmm. You know, it's script. Right, it is. We're part of a bigger situation. Mm -hmm. And like you, know, you said, like you said, you know, like we're talking about. I got about, you now. I got some. Yeah, we're, you we're, can go get it if you want. Let's try to get some to sip on. We're, we're talking about programming, you know, <laughs> and, you know, our people, we're programmed to accept what the society right. has uh, has given us in terms of, you know, like if we live in a, uh, a, a gun society. Right. Right? Right. And, you know, uh, you know our woman. They're, they've been conditioned to uh, produce children who will come out and because they're suppressed. Right. Because a young man has a problem with a woman being an authority figure over him. It has to be a father. It's not a natural balance, mm -hmm. a woman trying to play the role of a man. It's, it's, uh, it's over-exaggerated right. and it turns into abuse. Right, and, that, and that's, 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 you that's very, very positive what you're saying because like, yeah. the government is playing a role with that within yeah. this society because what they do is, like you don't see too many men in the corporate offices because there's, there's very competitiveness between the white guys and the black guys. The black guys dress a certain way. You know, the uh, women play a certain role in, in, in the cubicle farms. Yeah. And what happens is like they usually give the women those jobs. Right. So, so now if you give a woman the power. job to be the breadwinner, how is he going to lead his household? And how is she going to respect the man? And we is already it, know that's a mm -hmm. part of the, uh, the white supremacist mm -hmm. global uh, uh, control. It, it is a form so of that's what I call it, the suppression system. of African yeah. nation, nation building. Because mm -hmm. now, how are you going to be nation building and how are you going to live the polygamy lifestyle where you can handle certain things? You know, and that's why you know we have to get more black men into literally this building entrepreneurship at an incredible level to where you know you you know you're a producer of the world like you know I say you run factories and right. and things right. like that so that's another thing too family we are still talk about responsibilities and polygamy but also we have to talk about the suppression right. of just <laughs> men being able to nation build mm -hmm. be, be able to just have their compound their wives right. their factory their right. business yeah. right. their wives working with mm -hmm. them and right. building a true family where the, right. the children are being taken care of. where now you know you don't have to be like me back in the days man i'm telling you the the, the, the child care thing is to kill me man it's like literally drop your child off at daycare Go on a plantation, you know what I'm saying, right. and go pick your child back up and let's repeat the cycle for years. Right. Especially when you're in a young age and you're like a right. single it's, parent yeah, and things like that. So I'm telling people like that does not work. And then you talk about the situation where a woman say, I got, she has a man and she's been with him for 20 years. And you're like, you know what I'm saying, she's probably been cheat, getting cheated on for 20 straight years. Right. And then she psychologically thinks that that man has been faithful to her and things like that. And then the man is not being a man because now that man is running out and things like that. So it's like, you have a situation where you know it's like, it's like what is even manhood now? Because you know it's like right. you have a weak excuse of a man with it could, because you don't have the accountability factor in it, and mm -hmm. someone does you know. So it's like, and that's even more an importance of polygamy because now you have with the suppression of so many men and this being like the weakest generation of black men ever produced right. Right? in the history of the, the world. Now you have to be like, you know, so who's going to pick up the situation? Are these sisters going to be now running to white men and Indian right. men and right. Mexican men and all well, these the, other the, men? Uh, are our men are going to step up to the game. Listen, check this out. As far as men stepping up, it's not going to happen. It's <laughs> over. Okay? I came down here. It was the black mecca 20 years ago. What I'm seeing now is uh, it's not looking good. So we already so know food stuff. Age. We know we already... And you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm not. I have gay, uh, homosexual, and lesbian friends. I had a, a personal assistant that was uh, Willie. He was gay years and years ago here, right. and he actually stayed with us. So I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not prejudiced towards them or anything like that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm comfortable with my sexuality, but right. you know, it, you know um, it's not a, it's not a balanced society from what we've seen 30 years, 40 years ago. You know, and we they talked about, you know, um, the the. Uh, 
the milk, the baby milk, and what they were putting in that, and how, and then the so something is in the water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, no, That's no, a joke no, about, no, right? No, no. There's a video. There's a video a guy did, did about California because that's the bread basket. That's where they produce a, a lot of produce that's shipped, and then the runoff from the water that was, you know, wet in all of these uh, uh, the vegetation. You know, you have frogs that live along there. So they took the florals and started studying them <laughs> and seeing that they started to have, you know, two sexual organs, a male and a female organ and stuff oh, like that. They the took hell? the hell? You know, and, um, you know, so th there's a lot of gender manipulation mm -hmm. taking place, you know, and uh, it's all a part of a plan to reverse the order, you know, anti-God, you know what I'm saying, anti-Christ type of uh, philosophies and ideas where they reverse, you know, um, I said earlier, knowledge is to know the ledge. So you won't fall over the edge into the under, devil's uncivilization where it's his trick knowledge. So if you think of a stick figure man, right? Think of a stick figure man and he's standing on a ledge, right? So at, at the ledge, having knowledge itself, you know the ledge. Because if you go over the edge, that's the point to where you go from per perpendicular to upside down, mm -hmm. backwards, okay? You remember the positive and negative. So when you upside down, now you know you you opposite. So this society is a society that's not based on the original design that the uh, original man put in place. So now we're seeing the ultimate antichrist society in Babylon, USA, and um, you can't make it great again. Haha! <laughs> yes, family. Your time is up. Your time is up, yes. family. We it's cannot a, make this Africa thing. time. We not. We need to make Africa the great. United States of Nigeria. What's <laughs> <laughs> gonna go down? That's how you gotta change that. I think we can close this one out right here. Yeah, let me go. Let me get in here. Yeah, absolutely, get brother. Get yourself going, and we're gonna continue on some other topics and things. Yeah. But yeah, brother, crazy boy. This has been a revolutionary cam production family in yeah. your face as we talk about polygamy on an incredible perspective with someone who have lived a life. And you know me, I'm always plugging into situation and explaining to you about the importance of nation building. Having your, you know, your, your land, building your family, your community, us being able to just operate to where, you know what I mean? <clears throat> where we don't have a situation where 50% of the women are single. You know what I mean? And things like that. So, that. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just giving a general sense of like if we had a community, maybe about half of the women would be single and have no men and things like that. Right, right, we, right. And, exactly. then, and then so the, the philosophy the of ours would be we live here wouldn't work. So mm -hmm. what we're talking about family is a situation of balance and mm -hmm. we're not talking about doing this here in America. This is all what we're looking to do and are doing in Africa and that's mm -hmm. the vision and the future. So family, once again, you're live on... Revolutionary Cam with Bomani and Quasi Boyd mm -hmm. and I hope you enjoy this great presentation family as we literally talking about subjects that some people may be rough to talk about but we're gonna come back with you with more strong stuff so stay tuned on this entire weekend of non-stop hanging out with Quasi Boyd live on Revolutionary Cam. Peace fam, peace. <laughs> Those are two oh, awesome, awesome, excellent. Look up and get him, get him, get him a last smile, man. Get him a last smile, Quincy. There you go.